Hello, and thank you for joining us here at Electric Autonomy Canada. My name is Stephanie Wallcraft. I'm a contributor to the publication, and we're here today to speak with Colin Dillon, the Chief Technical Officer of the Automotive Parts Manufacturers Association. Colin is going to tell us about Project Aero, a project that's been initiated by the APMA to highlight opportunities in the EV and AV supply chains for Canada. Colin, thank you for joining us today. Hey, Stephanie. Good morning, Colin. How are you? I'm not too bad. Good. Thanks for the, taking the time. I appreciate it. I would love to speak to you and get more details from you about Project Aero, the, uh, the project that the APMA has, uh, has started up to highlight opportunities uh, within the EV and AV supply chain for, for Canadian companies. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Absolutely, I can. Um, we started the project, um, or we launched the project back in January at CES uh, over in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, and it's answering the call from the Prime Minister to have Canada work towards a zero uh, emission footprint by 2040. Um, and so Project Arrow will bring together, it's a, glo it's a nation nationwide collaboration, bringing together Canada to develop its first zero emission concept vehicle. Um, you know, are we looking at uh, manufacturing this in high volume or even in any volume after? Absolutely not. What we're trying to do is to stay uh, ahead or at least at the same level as our global competitors when it comes to the electrification uh, and zero emission vehicle development. And we feel that as Canada, uh, who, have a, who has a history of over 115 years of building um, some of the best automotive vehicles here on, on our land. And also over the past decade or so, this great new uh, movement for technology and leading in technology, not only uh, when it comes to things like artificial intelligence, but also uh, the volume of jobs that are being created in the tech sector. So for us, we, we see an overlap. We see you know an auto and a tech overlap which creates the right environment um, for zero emission vehicles. Uh, and so Project Arrow will, will basically be a, a, a kind of a, a lightning um, point for that. Great. Uh, I understand you've got the, the um, panel together who will be doing the, the judging. Can you talk actually a little bit about the, the competition aspect of it, what that aspect of it is meant to encourage within the program and the, the judging panel that's been announced? Sure. So phase one, um, we put together a design brief where we challenged Canada's colleges and universities to step up and say, hey, you should design Canada's um, first zero emission concept vehicle. Um, but in order for us to keep um, in tow and making sure we brought as much attention and attracted as much attention to the project, um, we put together a panel um, of nine judges, which included expertise in auto design to expertise in social matters coming together. Um, and uh, we have officially reviewed the entries. Um, we were able to shortlist nine entries to go forward and groups from all over Canada, from British Columbia up in Ottawa and, 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 and in the greater Toronto area. Um, and we have shortlisted the finalists, the three finalists that will go on to phase um, two of the design project to take their sketches and concepts and put them into CAD. You were speaking about the overlap that, that exists between automotive and tech. And here in Southern Ontario in particular, not only is there the conceptual overlap, but the physical overlap of the tech companies and, and automotive um, you know, supply chain and tier, tier one, tier two, but also OEMs working side by side in the same geographic area. Can you talk about how that contributes to um, helping advance Canada's role in uh, EV and AV supply chain development? There, there is a, a report that uh, I've, I've heard it, there's a draft version called Minds to Mobility, um, and it really highlights how Canada is poised and positioned to offer a complete supply chain when it comes to electric vehicles. Again, whether we're talking hydrogen fuel cell or whether we're talking lithium ion battery technology. 
um, to, to, to understand that we, from a, from a, a core minerals uh, standpoint, are probably even better suited in a place like China, who have already hundreds of uh, brand new startup OEMs. Um, the case in point is there, Stephanie, that we have the godforsaken right to build electric vehicles. Um, Project Arrow for us should also be seen um, as a blueprint in 2021, 2022 for any startup OEMs wanting to move into that space. Um, for us, electric, the electrification or the brand new propulsion methods that have been um, you know, provided um, and offered should highlight to Canada that we have, as you've mentioned, global OEMs manufacturing vehicles in this um, in this kind of you know vicinity we have some of the major tier ones who have head offices and intellectual property and R&D situated in in the greater kind of Toronto area in Ontario and then we have this very strong supply chain uh, not only a supply chain that has already been and, and continues to support uh, internal combustion engine technology, but a supply chain and companies like Linamar who are now poised and, and are prepared and positioning themselves to build induction electric motors and the components that are required for electric vehicles. Um, and so we truly hope that Project Arrow, again, the name Arrow, um, is from that 1950s Avro Aero project, um, and it is a uh, it is a you know a banging of the drum to to make sure people know that Canada should be heard when it comes to uh, mobility um, and the, uh, the 21st century. That's fantastic. And is there anything else on the subject of Project Aero or on the opportunities within the space that that you think is would be a good opportunity to highlight? Well, I, I think uh, with Project Arrow, uh, Stephanie, we are, we're trying to make sure that uh, both the government, um, provincially and federally, uh, are highlighted for the work that they are willing to do when it comes to support uh, companies and, and startups and development. Uh, we're hoping it highlights academia, the work our universities and our colleges are doing when it comes to design and engineering. Uh, you know, phase two, the engineering phase, will be a collaboration with two universities uh, from Canada. Um, and then it should also highlight our supply chain. Uh, it should attract brand new OEMs who are considering moving to North America. Um, but again, as I've said several times, it should also... Uh, attract and we've already seen some attraction from two brand new startups that want to build electric vehicles in Canada um, and so you know we feel in 2022 as we're showcasing the uh, the the concept vehicle uh, as well as the hydrogen fuel cell platform and a lithium-ion skateboard battery technology platform at CES or at the uh, APMA annual conference in June of 2022 we hope that it then starts a movement, which kind of means when we look back in 2032, Canada has now two to four of its own OEMs. Fantastic. Thanks so much for your time and your insight, Colin. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Okay. Thank you again to Colin Dillon of the APMA for joining us. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. Please take a moment to subscribe so that you don't miss any updates from us here at Electric Autonomy Canada.